Hello, I'm Anne-Marie Rossi, and I am an artist member of Imago Foundation for the Arts, and I am with Eileen Mayu, who is a founding artist member of Imago. Eileen has been painting since 1974. Eileen primarily paints in oils, but she's facile in many different mediums. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Anne-Marie. You are, Eileen, you're presently highlighted in the current exhibit at Imago. Yes, yes, I'm very happy about that. And you have five paintings that are on exhibit. Yes. And these paintings are all of Providence, is that right? Yes, they're mostly cityscapes. And do you have a special connection with Providence? Well, I've lived in Rhode Island most of my life. I grew up here and I've seen Providence evolve over the years into a very beautiful city. And so uh, it's, it's kind of a con con continuation of my coastal communities uh, series. I started doing uh, the coast of uh, Providence with the uh, eye bridge that I painted, uh, Providence Park. And it, it evolved into uh, general cityscapes. Do you uh, paint plein air or do you paint from photographs? Well, I've spent many, many years painting on site, plein air painting, and I learned a great deal about what things look in reality. So now as I get older and I can't get out as much, uh, I work from pho my photographic references and, I, and, and from memory as well. Do you have a set color palette that you use or does the palette change depending on the um, scene that you're gonna be painting? Well, I, I usually work with a, a, a six basic colors, uh, warm and cool yellow, warm and cool red, and a warm and cool blue with white. And then as I need to, I will add other colors to the palette. But I like to keep it the palette simple uh, to create um, uh, color harmony. Great. So we're now gonna look at each one of the five paintings and have you talk a little bit about each of the paintings. Okay. Eileen, the first painting we're gonna talk about is Water Place Park. Can you tell me whether this place has any special meaning for you? Uh, yes, uh, I actually uh, rode the gondolas in Venice and I rode the gondola on uh, the Providence River. And, uh, and I learned that the only other gondola in the world besides Venice was the one in Providence. So it has, and it's a, it's a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. And the, uh, the river actually looks like a canal with the, with the, just like in Venice with the buildings on each side of it. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. People just love going on that gondola. So it has special meaning to me. But the river never always looked like that, did it? No. <laughs> no. And that's another thing that motivates me to do the Providence series is because Providence has changed so much and become a place that you'd want to paint. And before it was full of rats and trash, right? Yeah. So the next painting we're going to look at is Pro Prospect Terrace. Okay. And when did you paint that painting? Uh, that's, that's part of the series. It's a recent painting uh, within the last year. Uh, and uh, uh, I painted it because of the uh, the backlighting, um, the way that the arch forms a, a lighting situation around uh, Roger Williams' statue. Uh, and I'm very interested in how light affects form and how it affects the colors in the trees. I had a chance to work with the palette knife to bring out a lot of those colors. And, and, a, and the palette knife actually creates uh, fresher color and more variety of color than you would actually with the uh, brushwork. Next, Eileen, the next painting is also of Providence and it is of uh, looking over, it's called Looking Over Providence. And we see a statue there of Roger Williams. Can you tell me why you chose this particular place to paint? Well, here, here we have Roger Williams again in, in, in this painting, uh, looking over the, uh, the city that he founded and it, that had special significance for me as well, it kind of tied history into the cityscape. And uh, you know the way the uh, buildings are juxtaposed against each other, changing direction. And it, it just, it, just uh, it was very interesting for me to do. Well, this painting, as well as the one, the last one we just talked about, really shows your use of light. Can you tell us how you achieve that? Well, I'm always, concerned with how light affects form, the color in the form, 
Uh, I pay from observation. So this is what I'm always looking for, especially on the statue, how the light affects the statue. So do you actually, do you actually mix this color on your palette or do you, or do you glaze it? Um, kind of a combination of both. I'll do some mixing and some, then some glazing when it's dry. Uh, but, but mostly it was mixed and I did a little, I did brush work combined with palette knife work on this. And the next uh, painting we're gonna look at is Providence River Park. Yes, and that, that was the first in the series. And uh, I was really interested in the negative space in the spires of the eye bridge, but also the, uh, the tugboats that are parked there at the park near the bridge. Uh, it, it, the one on the left is called Amy McAllister and the one on the right is called the monster. Amy McAllister is uh, uh, actually the boat that uh, my neighbor is a captain of. So that had, that had, you know, like personal significance as well. So were you around when they first built this friendship bridge? Yes. It's, you're drawn to the bridge. What about it? Well, it's the negative shapes. There are three uh, parts of the bridge that repeat the three stacks in the background. And the cityscape is there and combined with the, with the waterfront view. And it was kind of like an extension of my uh, coastal community series where I looked at the waterfront from the view of a boat. And so the same thing happened here. And then the series evolved into cityscapes away from the waterfront. And finally, the last painting we're gonna look at is the painting you titled India Point. Yes, that one is also uh, on the waterfront, but from the view of the, the land, I'm changing it up a little bit, showing the, the uh, eye bridge and the three smokestacks in the background. That's also uh, a wonderful, peaceful place that where people like to go to take a walk along the shoreline. And that's kind of what's in common with all my work is I want people to find peace, to feel peace when they look at my work. There's so much chaos in the world. I think that we need a little bit of peace. And so that's pretty much my focus and just about everything I do, because my work is kind of meditative as it is. And I, when I, if I meditate, I like to look at the landscape or I like to look at the water. It's just, it's just something that uh, I think not, not just to me, but it fills the soul. And you juxtapose both of that, the nature and city. Yes, I like to mix it up a little bit. And I think what these paintings also show is your incredible skill in perspective. Can you tell us um, how you learned to draw like that? Well, as a, uh, a realistic painter and painting portraits, I, I've had to, I learned to draw accurately. And so that, that is something that's very important to me. Uh, I, I'm not perfect at it, but I do the best I can to create an accurate, representation of what I'm looking at so that the viewer can see what I'm seeing. I'm not trying to do it photographically and I'll even change it up to make to uh, uh, improve the composition. But I try to find something aesthetic in everything. Well, if, even if we go back to uh, looking over Providence and we're looking past the statue of uh, Roger Williams, I don't know how many point perspective you have in that painting. You have buildings going in every which direction. That is really skilled work. Thank you. And it took a while to do that too, because <laughs> I get confused a lot. Do you still, do you have a daily practice of drawing? Do you keep sketchbooks? Oh yeah, I have sketchbooks that are filled. I, whenever I do something, I try to do a preliminary drawing ahead of time, especially with portraits. Preparation is key to creating a successful painting. Well, what I try to do is work from observation mostly, but if I don't have the subject there in front of me, I will take photographic references and use them to create a composition. I kind of go do the color as I go along. I don't do preparatory color sketches. I do preparatory black and white sketches using graphite in my sketchbooks. It's very rare that I do a color sketch. I just get, get, get on into my easel and work from my palette and, and do my experimenting there. So Eileen, do you take commissions? Oh yes, I, I, I have done uh, commissions of uh, boats and houses, uh, um, people, portraits, uh, pet portraits. So yeah, I do a lot of that. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary.